You're racing against the clock. Someone is after you. You need to defend yourself. You scan the kitchen for anything that you can use to protect yourself. A knife? <laughs> Cliche. Frying pan? What are you, a Disney princess? Then you see it. Yeah, now you're talking. internet welcome to food theory the show that's more spud than stud and welcome to minecraft weekend well we're over here talking about the deadly science of minecraft potatoes over on game theory we're delving into all of the wild <laughs> wild additions in minecraft's latest update and talking all about the warden the skulk and the lore of the newly added music disc number five so be sure to check out that video after you're done with this one but before you hop over there you're probably wondering why i'm also talking about minecraft and specifically potatoes over over here on Food Theory. Well, for that, I actually have to blame you. You see, I'm always on the lookout for your episode suggestions over on Twitter, at MattPatGT if you're interested in submitting something. And recently, one request in particular caught my attention. At XShadowcasterX reached out to me with this tweet. Quote, I need to know if you could kill someone with a raw potato. Like, what is the science of Tommy and its death on the Dream SMP? Can someone actually die from blunt force trauma with a potato? Now, at this point, you're either reliving that moment because it lives rent free in your head, or you're wondering how I just accidentally misspelled Dream Simp and who the heck Tommy Knit is. So let's just get all on the same page because whether or not you watch Minecraft YouTuber soap operas, this is going to be a nutritious theory that you're not going to want to miss. The Dream SMP is a Minecraft survival multiplayer server, a special section of the internet just for playing survival games in Minecraft that's been turned into a uh, playground, a performance stage for a group of friends to act out a story using structured improv. Think of this thing as a soap opera being performed live, using Minecraft characters and Twitch streamers as the actors. It is, without exaggeration, one of the biggest things to have happened in the gaming scene from the past two years. And in that amount of time, the story has produced dozens of iconic moments. But few of them have had the level of drama and pure shock as Tommy in its final death. You know why I won't? Because I'm I leaving this prison you, in a- Stop it! Stop it! Right stop it! Now, stop actually. it! Stop it! I'm on two hearts. Should I- He's f***ing dead. I've seen his grave. His grave is real. His corpse is that. Why don't you go see him? No, stop, 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 stop. That, my friends, is the stunned silence of a man who's just been clubbed to death by a raw potato. And not just any man either. Tommy was, in many ways, the main protagonist of the Dream SMP. In a few swings of a potato, the story suddenly lost its main character. And what more glorious way to bid adieu to this mortal coil than at the hands of a potato-wielding madman? And there he sat, in the cold blackness of death from henceforth. One stream later, he'd be brought back to life, thereby negating the three strikes you're dead rule on the server and solidifying Dream's abilities as a god capable of revival, but still, the potato death was a pretty big shock to any fans of this thing. Okay, but enough talk about Minecraft drama, it's time to talk Tuber. This is the food channel, after all. We need to answer at XShadowcasterX's question. Could Dream have actually done this? Is this just a classic case of video game logic going brrrr? Or could you actually kill someone with a potato? Clearly, I'm gonna be the first person to conduct a scientific investigation into the potential lethality of taters, so... Wait, what's this? Risk assessment of blunt ballistic impact trauma due to potato cannons. Huh. Okay, so apparently I'm not the first person to scientifically investigate the risks of getting clobbered by a rogue spud. Sure, the academic research paper is looking at potato guns, but it's a good enough place to begin, and a good reminder that anything can be lethal if it's moving fast enough. However, a high-speed projectile is a far cry from what we're actually talking about here. Dream's weapon of choice was a potato of the handheld variety. Less potato gun, and more potato club. <laughs> potato club just sounds like a very carb-heavy sandwich, to be honest. Obviously, his potato club isn't gonna be striking with the same amount of speed, and most of us intuitively understand that faster equals more dangerous. A high-speed highway crash is going to be a lot more deadly than a low-speed fender bender. But it's important to understand why. Weapons like bullets are sometimes described as kinetic projectiles or kinetic energy weapons, and that's largely because their deadliness comes from the kinetic energy, that is the energy of motion. If you paid attention in physics class, you might remember that kinetic energy equals one-half mass times velocity squared. That mass part shouldn't be all that surprising. Getting hit with a heavy thing hurts more than getting hit with a light thing. Double the mass, double the kinetic energy, obvious logic is obvious. But the velocity squared part is what makes speed particularly deadly. Double the speed, and you get four times the kinetic energy. Ten times the speed, a hundred times the kinetic energy. That's how a tiny bullet, despite being a lot lighter than your fist, or a potato, can be that much more lethal. It's traveling so fast. So, to understand how much kinetic energy Tommy and its poor little noggins absorbing each time he gets bopped on the head, we need 
to know the mass of the potato and how fast it's moving. The current record holder for world's largest potato weighed in at 11 pounds, or 5 kilos. But if you just go to your local grocery and pick out the biggest potato you can find, it's gonna be closer to around 1.75 pounds, or 0.8 kilos. Fun fact, the US Department of Agriculture actually has official standards about the diameter and weight of what can be legally defined as a large potato, medium potato, or small potato. Because without those guardrails in place, the starchy root vegetable economy would be completely out of control. So the next time you hear someone dismissively refer to something as small potatoes, you know that technically they're talking about something that weighs less than six ounces and is less than two and a half inches in diameter. Actually, they're probably not using that precise of a definition because nobody actually knows about official food labeling guidelines. But now you know, thanks to me, and thanks to the fine folks over at the USDA who are responsible for coming up with those sorts of definitions. Anyway, moving into other variables of our equation. As for speed of the attack, most professional boxers are able to punch with a speed of 25 miles an hour, or 11.2 meters per second. Though the best pros can reach speeds of over 30 miles an hour, or 13.4 meters per second. The world's fastest punch hit at a speed of 45 miles an hour, or 20 meters per second. We do want to give Dream his best shot at this, but we also have to acknowledge that, you know, he's not a boxer. Not yet, at least. Creator Clash 2 is coming. Anyway, let's go with the average of 25 miles per hour, at least to start with. Plugging all of that into our kinetic energy formula, using metric units like the civilized world, 0.8 kilograms times 11.176 meters per second squared equals 99.92 joules of kinetic energy. Meaning a top-tier boxer smacking you in the face with a large potato would be delivering almost exactly 100 joules of kinetic energy, which, as usual when we calculate energy on these channels, means absolutely nothing to anyone. Is it a lot? It turns out, uh, maybe? It's actually just a matter of probability. The faster an object is moving when it hits you in the head, the more likely it's gonna kill you. Shock of all shocks. According to a report titled Lethality Criteria for Debris Generated from Accidental Explosions, the probability that getting hit with an object will be fatal is shown by this graph. I know this looks suspiciously like 11th grade math, which none of us really want to revisit, but stick with me here. The probability of a blow being fatal increases logarithmically. This is also known as an S-curve. We don't need to know the ins and outs, but one thing's plain to see, that number, smack dab in the middle there, represents 100 joules. The number that we just calculated for our pro potato punch. Getting hit with that much kinetic energy presents a 50% chance of fatality. Basically, a coin flip as to whether Mr. Potato is gonna be lethal when he collides with Mr. Head. That said, we need to consider that in our Dream SMP scenario, Tommy and it is being hit repeatedly by Dream. Each blow with a 50% chance of fatality. If each hit with a potato decreases Tommy's health by half a heart, and he starts the interaction with 10 hearts, that means that he's being hit at least 20 times. At 50% odds per hit, the chance that number of blows is not fatal is a dismal 0.00009%. Practically zero probability of survival, meaning that in this scenario, the likelihood of death by YouTuber Tuber is assured. But okay, you say, so much of this has to do with the power of the blow behind the potato. A spud is only as powerful as the idiot deciding to use it as a blunt force weapon. We calculated a modified pro boxer landing this punch, but why would we assume that Dream is a pro boxer by any standard? Well, first off, it's not that unreasonable to think that he would be strong. It's confirmed that Dream possesses special powers, including raising people from the dead and coding the actual game. I mean, it is the Dream SMP after all. For all we know, he could be canonically way stronger than a pro boxer. We also know that in the world of Minecraft, characters are able to carry, like, infinite amount of materials. So, you know, there is some level of super strength here. That said, for the purpose of this kind of discussion and to make sure Dream doesn't have an unfair advantage in calculations, let's run another scenario assuming that he has no special strength or skills. He's just a regular Joe. A regular Steve, more accurately, who can throw a punch or wield a pickaxe, but isn't gonna be stepping into the ring with Tyson anytime soon. Or Jake Paul? What, what even is boxing anymore? For this calculation, we'll use a study of 16 amateur boxers that found that the typical punch ranged in speed from 6.7 meters a second to 9.5 meters per second. Let's take the average of those numbers, again, nothing special there, and assume that someone is trained enough with their potato punches that they can swing a spud with that speed. Run in the calculation again, 0.8 kilograms times 8.1 meters per second squared, and you get 52 joules of kinetic energy. Going back to our graph, we see that getting hit with an object with 52 joules of energy gets us around a 10% chance of lethality. In other words, it definitely can be fatal, but it probably won't be, provided, of course, it only happens once. However, remember, Dream is delivering a rapid flurry of at least 20 potato strikes, each landing with a velocity of an average punch. It's only a matter of time before that 10% chance of death becomes an inevitability. The probability of surviving all 20 hits that we see in this clip to bring Tommy down from 10 full hearts to zero 
is 12%. It's not nothing, but the odds are definitely not in your favor. By sheer probability, one in every 10 punches kills you. There are twice that number of punches happening here. The odds of killing you are now almost 90%. Those are the kind of odds that not even Tom Cruise could survive in Top Gun 2, which honestly sounds like it should be an episode of film theory. In conclusion, that scene of dream smacking Tommy in it upside the head over a dozen times and the tragic loss of our beloved Brit by Spud to the dome isn't just a case of video game logic. In fact, it's almost exactly how this sort of scenario would play out in real life. I swear, it's the episodes that I think are gonna wind up the craziest that ultimately end up working out. And you end up cooking your steak in the dryer, surprisingly. I don't even know anymore. But I do know that aside from the fact that Tommy Innit was immediately revived and Dream broke all his canon rules seemingly for the sake of convenience, this Spud Smackdown is 100% supported by science. But hey, much and raw potatoes might restore your health in Minecraft, but they're not doing all that much for you up here on the top side. You know what is good for you, though? Meals that you don't have to dig up from the ground yourself. No axes, no hammers, no butchering your own cow in the field. Imagine what luxury. And with our sponsor for today's episode, HelloFresh, that's exactly the luxury you're getting. And what's more, you don't even have to go to the grocery store. It's summer. The world is bouncing back from the last couple of years, so you got one goal. Get out there and do stuff. Whether you're working on your diamond armor or working on your tan, don't lose any more time doing things that aren't fun. Let HelloFresh worry about what's for dinner or lunch or whenever you just want to make the pre-planned, pre-thought out, pre-portioned meals that they're delivering right to your doorstep. HelloFresh is sustainable and they're thoughtful so you're not wasting food and they're always catered to your dietary or content related needs. My latest delivery from them with basil crusted chicken came with plenty of potatoes right in time for this episode. And when I told HelloFresh that I wanted to mix it up from the chicken and pork that I'd been getting for the last couple of deliveries, boom! Shrimp tacos. Are you vegetarian only? HelloFresh has got you covered. You want more meats? HelloFresh has got you covered there too. Also, while food prices seem to be climbing a lot this year, you can still get started with HelloFresh with 16 free meals. Yes, really. 16 free delicious meals delivered right to your door. All you have to do is go to HelloFresh.com and use the code FOODTHEORY16 for those 16 free meals plus three surprise gifts. Or, you know, just click the link down in our description below. Food Theory 16 F-O-O-D-T-H-E-O-R-Y 16. 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. Click the link down in the description below. Thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring this episode. Go order some food now. And as always, remember, it's all just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit.